in 4 H N H here, looking out the shack window there. We've got a gloomy, rainy day. Not raining at the moment, but it has been. And I think that's pretty much the prediction all day. But hey, you guys, if you don't tune in to hear about my weather, <clears throat> let's uh, let's take a look at the uh, shack here, what I want to show you today. Actually has nothing to do with the radios, amplifiers, tuners, computer. But what I do want you to see is this. This antenna right here, that's called a Fritzl FD4. I have one uh, out there. I've had it now for well over 25 years. The uh, very well made uh, gentleman named Kurt Fritzl, who is a silent key now, made those. And they were sold at Ham Radio Outlet. I bought the mine early 90s, I'm thinking 92, 93. That's a six to one ballon in the middle. Aircraft control cable. Look at those uh, insulators on the end. This thing is really just about indestructible. Um, it's at its second QTH now. And uh, the, as you saw out the window there, there's just a lot of greenery out there, a lot of trees. So when I deploy wire antennas, it's quite a chore. Uh, slingshot and you know weaving them through limbs and uh, hiring people to come put up pulleys. That's how I like to do the, the midpoint and the ends. This one's held up with a pulley at about 50 feet, I think, 52 maybe. And uh, some uh, very thick Decron rope. And uh, now let me turn the HT down a little bit here. So um, <clears throat> what I want to show you about this antenna, it's, it's, it's got to be the best variation of the Wyndham ever created. Now, you know, in a lot of the Wyndham designs, you're, you'll usually have uh, some 450 ohm balance line coming down from the feed point. The, the Fritzl does not work that way. And instead of a four to one balance, which is also quite common, this one is a six to one balance. Okay, if you, if you look at the uh, numbers and get into all the technical ease, you can find different impedances up and down the, the antenna when you feed it at certain points. Uh, this one is, by the way, at uh, 90 feet on one side, 45 on the other, all center fed. You can tell in the photo there, the spool of wire on the right is much bigger than the one on the left. Well, it's because it's twice as much wire. So the instructions even um, recommend that this is installed as an inverted V with a 150 degree angle at the apex. And that's about what I have. By the way, I've deployed this thing in many, many ways. Very forgiving. I've, if you were an aircraft looking down at it, I've had it installed where it looked like the letter L from the sky. I mean, you just, I had to do what I had to do. It is currently pretty much straight. So I want to show you uh, the performance of this. Now, it just performs like a dipole. It's not, it's a, not going to give you any gain, really. Well, on the higher bands, maybe a little. But, uh, but it's essentially a dipole. But the beauty of it is, it's where it makes a great receive antenna or transmit antenna, um, requiring no tuner on the bands you see listed there. But what I want to show you is it is also resonant on portions of six meters. And so, uh, and by the way, when I purchased mine, it did say that as far as the 80 meter band is concerned, it was about a 180 to 100 kilohertz uh, portion of the 80 meter band, so not the full band. Okay, so <clears throat> SWR meters in place here. Oh boy, let me zoom out a little bit. And I'm going to be cycling through various bands here on the FTDX 5000 to, uh, to show you what the SWR curve looks like. So here we go. Bear with me, I know this is gonna be a longer video with all that introduction, but I wanted to give you some background on the antenna. Oh, the reason I mentioned how robust it is with the aircraft cable and all, deploying it up through trees, I've literally tugged on it and let it pull through the tree limbs. It's that strong. Okay, and by the way, if you wanna purchase one these days, the last uh, place that I found them, this one's listed on a place called Ham Shop, and I, it, I, don't, I, I don't know if it's used or old stock or what, uh, Mr. Fritzl, like I said, passed away, and uh, for a while there was a company, Hofi, H-O-F-I dot D-E, Deutschland, Hofi dot D-E, 
was uh, continuing to manufacture these uh, antennas according to the original spec. Okay, now I've got a bunch of uh, bands here set to AM so I can give a quick transmission and let you see the uh, SWR. So first of all, here we are at 53070. So we're up here in the uh, FM portion of six meters. Oops, get the finger out of the screen there. <clears throat> all right, here we go. Look at the SWR meter. 1.3 and if you get down to the lower end of the band of course it's gonna it's gonna raise up on you but uh, it's never really terrible nothing that even an internal tuner in the rig couldn't handle okay I'm gonna reach down here now and go to 10 meters 28 400 so we're in the middle of the uh, general portion there uh, 1.3 uh, five yeah really just very low on this cross needle the radio I've got it set to SWR as well it's showing 1.3 okay and then I'll do the FM portion of 10 meters so I'm up at 29 four uh, 29 six four so two to one there usable all right, now we'll go to 12 meters, 24,955. 1.35, I guess. Very usable, and by the way, all the way across that band. Now, these particular antennas, because of the math, how they are operating, uh, sorry about the, moving the camera there, because they're operating uh, based upon harmonics, um, they, the math just does not work out for 15 and 30 meters. I'm going to switch to 15 and let you see that. The noise you hear over there is my auto tuner. Uh, let me put it in manual mode. It tracks my band changes and, and will go to the setting for whatever frequency I'm going to operate on. Okay, so here we go on 15 meters. See that? Close to three. Again, nothing that even an internal tuner could not handle. Here comes 17 meters. Oh, about 1.6. And, you know, it's really usable all the way across the band. It never goes above two or even, even close. It's a narrow band anyway. So now we'll go to uh, 20 meters. And I'm, uh, I'm at uh, 1419. 1 1.6. I'm gonna go on up, I'm gonna move it up to uh, Closer to the high end of the band. Huh, 1.6. Okay, we'll go down to the lower end. I'll even go down into the past FT8 all the way down here to the CW portion. 1.7. So there you go, the math is working for us here. Um, math is great. I've got a ZS6 BKW. That's a completely different antenna variation of a G5RV where the math was redone. And uh, it'll work on uh, 6, 10, 12, 17, 20, and 40. And 80 with a tuner. But it'll do 10, 12, I should say the FM portion of 10, 12, 17, 20, and 40 without a tuner. But that should be another video. Just thought I'd mention that. Math is wonderful. Okay, so now let's go to uh, 30 meters. Now, remember, that's a multiple of 15. And we're at 3 to 1. So forget 30 meters unless you want to use a tuner. And here we go now at 40 meters. 1.6. See what the... See, the radio's SWR meter doesn't agree. It sees a 1.1 and a half. 
Uh, it's just very usable on 40, all the way across. Now, here's the interesting thing. It's not supposed to work on 80. I'm in the middle of the 80 meter band. One point six. I'm gonna go all the way down to three point five. Boy, this is a long video, a lot to show. If you're watching it this far, you must really be uh, interested in learning, and that's uh, kudos to you. Okay, here we go. Barely moving the meter. All right, now I'm gonna go to the extreme other end. I should have put the fast button on here. But 5,000 does a pretty good job getting up there. All right, here we go. There's a QSO going on on 95, so I'm gonna come down a little bit. One point six and a half, <laughs> somewhere along in there. Uh, so there you have it. Now you might be wondering, well, wait a minute, how come that one is working uh, wide across 80 meters? I mean, 500K. I, I played around with it. I did, uh, as, it, as the cable comes in, I'm using RG213, 100 feet of it. As it enters the, the shack, um, there's a drop ceiling up there. Let me pan. You'll see the drop ceiling. Okay, it enters the shack though over behind me comes in underneath the deck using a uh, I, sh I should have gotten a photo of it but it, I've got some special uh, these tubes that you, you bore a hole in the wall and this tube inserts and it has caps on each side and your cable goes through it looks really neat so the coax comes through there and as it enters the house over there I have it coiled uh, about three turns probably 10 inches or so I'm gonna show you the other one I do another one right down here look at this right behind the tuner that's it right there with the big choke on it I coiled the 213 there as well and uh, you know poor man's ballon choke ballon thing because uh, you know an antenna like that's gonna have some common mode current to deal with so uh, there's another subject but uh, you gotta look that one up if you're not familiar with that term uh, the uh, common mode current, but that little bit of witchcraft, if you will, that I've done with the coil um, gave me that broadness on the band. So, uh, yeah, you know, it's just probably fooling the radio, but here's the deal. The antenna is effective. Very low noise floor. Um, it's going to extend this video. I know I don't have but 15 minutes, I believe, so let me, uh, let me get on... Uh, I'll go to 40 meters, lower sideband. Oh, I'm getting my power line noise. Look at that on the scope. Okay. Uh, let's go to 20 meters. Power companies had to come out here many times trying to narrow that down because different times of the day and whether it's humid or not, it changes. Okay, so um, I've got the FTDX 5000 noise reduction on. Let me turn that off. So let me get that turned on. Okay, so here's my doublet, 160 meter dipole. Now it's it's going to have some gain here that the Fritzel won't have. There's the Fritzel. A little bit lower noise floor, but of course less gain. But that's a 160 meter doublet, 246 feet 4 inches, fed with uh, 450 ohm balance line versus the Fritzel. So not a bad antenna. Um, and if you can find one, I highly recommend the uh, Fritzel FD4. 
73 from N4H&H.